Hey guys, welcome to the Garbage Time Podcast. I'm your host, Katie Nolan. Uh, big news. Yeah. Today's podcast is sponsored. It's yes. brought to you by Adidas. Ooh. Stop wasting your workouts and start finding your more with tracking and training gear from Adidas. Fit Smart and Smart Run give you the stats that matter and coach you to improve every step of the way. Search Fit Smart or Smart Run at Adidas.com today. All right. Do it. All right. That Sex was my first ad read ever. Crushed Amazing. It. You crushed, crushed it. Crushed it. Awesome. Crushed it. I'm joined today by producer Matt. Hey, Katie. Hi, Matt. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. And producer Dave. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Sticking to it. I like it. Mm-hmm. Later in the show, I'm going to be joined by comedian Dan Soder. Here's a quick moment from that chat. Listen, Blaine Gabbert could be okay, but the thing I like about him is he actually has football intelligence. He knows mm. how to check down and throw the ball away as opposed to Colin Kaepernick and his dog right out of a kennel energy that he has in the backfield. (laughs) Where he's just like, ah, ah, ah. Uh, You're like, Colin, no, Colin, drop it. Focus. Drop it, drop it. But he does it. He throws a bullet right into the chest of whatever middle linebacker is playing a soft cover too. Because that's the life we live, quest for six. (laughs) If you want to skip ahead to hear the rest of that, it'll be about 20 minutes in. But first, this week on the show, Garbage Time is the name of our show. Uh, We broke format. We did an entire show that we did in front of a live audience at a comedy club, which was amazing. Um, Mm, So fun. We are all exhausted. That's true. It's been a lot of work. um, And I feel like you guys must be super relieved that it's over because it was a lot of work. But also, you should feel very proud of yourselves. Well, thank you. Thank and you. you should, too. I mean, what did you think of the experience up there? I mean, It was amazing. It was stressful. Mm-hmm. I haven't done anything in front of an audience in a really long time. So when you, like, get used to the tiny closet room that I'm in, like, it's not my ideal and it's not what I like, but I'm getting, like, I get used to it. So my skills in front of people have gotten very rusty. <laughs> mm. And so to be at a comedy club with comedians who do this all the time and a large group of people watching was very stressful for me, whereas normally I'd be like, this is awesome. So that, I was very in my own head and freaked out about it. Um, so I so I drank a lot of beer. But the good thing was that like the heavy lifting, I was happy to kind of just lay out on this episode, you know, mm-hmm. and let the comedians do the funny and I would just do the legwork of moving the show along, but the night itself was so fun. Don't sell yeah. yourself short. I mean, I think everyone's favorite part was you and Katie Rich. Yeah, you guys killed it. That was, it was fun. And she's wonderful and very generous and didn't at any point make me feel like an idiot. Um, but like, how do you guys feel? You all put in so much work into like organizing this, finding the club and booking the talent and yeah. It was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it, was, it felt good to see it come together. It was really cool just to like have an idea of, hey, we should do something different and like do a show in a comedy club and have comedians tell jokes about sports. And for that idea to actually become a real thing where you're sitting there watching these awesome comedians and you up on stage being hilarious and actually seeing it happen was an awesome feeling. And then seeing it, you know, air last night and, you know, hearing great things from people, great feedback. It's, yeah. it's fucking awesome. You should be proud. My favorite feedback that I saw was like, whoa, what is this? Yeah. It was like, yeah, it is super weird. Like, if you're flipping through the channels and you yeah. see what we, like, visually, it was beautiful. But, like, when you see that on a sports network, you're stopping and you're like, For sure. what? What is this? How do you feel, Ford? You feel good? I agree. I mean, I, that was the thing I was most proud of. And, you know, everybody put together an idea that was really different. And we pulled it off. It looked cool. It made sense while also not making sense and being a big surprise. So uh, hope we do it again. Yeah, it was, it was really awesome. fun. And also, James Mattern, the first comedian, um, he used to do crowd warm-up That's for awesome. Crowd Goes Wild. He was the one who made the crowd go wild. <laughs> and that was his first time doing stand-up on television, like doing a set on TV. Yeah. He's yeah. been doing stand-up for a while. Yeah. Um, and that was just really cool to to get to give him that moment. And he was so grateful. And it was like, we're grateful for you being here. Yeah. Anyway, all around, it was really, really cool. Agreed. I'm very happy we did it. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you can go to our YouTube channel, and most of it is is up there. Yeah. So you should definitely check that out. It's a little weird and different, but 
God, was it fun. It was yeah. awesome. It was Big thanks so to the comic strip. Yeah. Great, great they place. They were great. The yeah. comic strip and all the comedians, everything was fantastic. And you guys. I mean it. Be proud. You know what? You too. Take next week off. <laughs> Sounds perfect. perfect. How perfect. about that? Sold. You can take Sold. off Thanksgiving. You so generous. Because you crushed it. Oh. Uh, all right. It's time for Fade That Pick. Fade that pick. These picks are being made by someone with absolutely zero gambling expertise, so if you choose to bet actual money on these picks, you're stupid and don't care about money because these picks are all probably going to be wrong. So definitely fade these picks. <laughs> uh, here's how this works. You guys know by now my producers are going to give me some information about a few games. I'm going to make my picks, and then you should fade them because I'm bad at this. Uh, last week I went one and three and lost my lock of the week, which was Denver. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's tough. Whoops. Mm -hmm. um, so my fate, my overall fade that pick record is now 7, 10, and 1. I, I don't, right. it means nothing. I mean, does everybody understand that this means nothing? Let's, <laughs> let's get started. First game. Broncos at Bears. Bears minus 1. Okay, Matt, give me, give me some stats. Well, obviously, big week for Denver. This could be the beginning of the Brock Osweiler era. He is actually one of the five tallest quarterbacks in NFL history at six foot seven, wow. which, you know, to put that in terms we can visualize, that's the size of Drew Brees and Russell Wilson standing on top of each other. Um, and, that checks uh, out. I checked that. Yeah, but he's got a tough test. Chicago actually has a top ten defense, which is something I didn't know. They uh, oh. they started so poorly, but they actually, are, it's going to be a good test for him. We should probably go back and edit that fan battle segment then where we sold yeah. the Chicago That's defense right. for $3. Like Aaron Rodgers, 20000 yeah. Bears D, 12 Yeah. We, can we go back and fix that in post? Yes. <laughs> Great. I need for that sure. to be Already accurate. Because people come to garbage time for the facts. That's right. So we got to give them the facts. Yeah. Uh, Dave, what do you got? Um, as uh, Ford mentioned, Brock Osweiler, now the starting QB for the Broncos. Peyton Manning threw four INTs last week. He's out with a number of injuries, shoulder, rib cage, foot, old age. Um, hip. I, there's got to be a hit in there. Probably too. Um, so, Pride. Kate, what do you think? Uh, think the Broncos are better off now? Well, here's what I think. It's the hashtag year of the backup. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Rarely do I ever say, this was our thing, we called it. Because I hate when people say that. But I'm fucking saying it right now. Oh, we no. were talking about year of the backup. Like week two. The first week, the second week, we did a whole thing about backup quarterbacks. Right it's now. like how this is insane. And every week, it's another another situation. Um, I love Brock Osweiler uh, because his name is so great. It's great. It's amazing. Um, and and I think what we need to do is come up with uh, a nickname for for Brock. It's great because he needs a good nickname. I so agree. like I was thinking, Brock Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, I really like that. Do I you? Like Brock do you like it lot. enough that like you would want me to sing a Brock Lobster song? I would love you to. So do maybe that. we'll maybe if he's like good if they win this week. Behind Brock Osweiler. Okay. Next, well, not next week. Two weeks from now on the podcast, we will do a Brock Lobster so song. So he needs okay. to win one game in two weeks, and we get a Brock Lobster. Ooh. Sure. All right. All right. Perfect. We're holding if no, it. if he goes undefeated, if Brock Osweiler wins both games okay. between now and the next time, whatever, we'll we'll do. I'll do a Brock Lobster song. Okay. Um, if, as long as you guys will play like the mouth instruments. Sure. No Great. problem. Twist I'll, I'll learn the part. Yeah. I'll learn the part. Um, I like the I like the nickname for him, Dwayne the Brock Johnson. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because this here's how I think that he would go. So this is my Dwayne the Brock Johnson impression. Right? Okay. I'm ready. Um, What's the name of that uh, new Bears running back? I think it's... It doesn't matter what his name is! <laughs> wow, what is happening right now? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. There aren't too many other... There aren't too many Osweiler puns out there, so mm -hmm. I'll just go right down the runway with President Brock Obama. I like I it. I hate it. Love it. No, I, I like President Brock it. Obama. I mean, what I else like did him. we have? Fraggle uh, Brock? I like ooh, Fraggle Brock. Brock. Brocky, yeah. Brocky Road. Brocky Road. Mm -hmm. uh, Rockefeller Center. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, Ooh, that's Rockefeller good, Center. Cool. Yeah. All right. Let's let's throw this out to the people. Um, you guys, he's you got to help us come up with a nickname. You should tweet them at us mm -hmm. at Garbage Time or at me, Katie Nolan. Hashtag nickname Brock. Perfect. Does that, that work for you? That works for me. Uh, send us your nicknames. We've got a nickname, this man. Yeah, man. Um, okay, I guess we should make a pick on the actual game now. Let's, let's do that. Uh, Matt, what are you what are you doing? I'm going with. Brock Obama here. I'm going Broncos. I think, uh, I don't know, I think they have such a complete team that he doesn't need to be that good for them to win. 
Um, I'm also going with uh, Dwayne the Brock Johnson. Uh, I'll, t- I'll, I'll take uh, the Broncos plus one here. I think that their, their defense is still strong. They still have weapons, and I don't think they'll take a huge step down with Peyton out. Um, I'm going to just disagree with both of you, and I'm going to take the Bears minus one because uh, I'm going to get a dog soon, and the dog's name is Bear, and I'm feeling like it today. So I'm going to take the Bears minus one. Fade that pig. That's the kind of logic I'm going to be using this week because I'm exhausted, because I don't have a voice, because I think I'm getting sick. We're going to go based purely on no logic, and I hope everyone's okay with that. The segment's fucking called Fade That Pick. You're going to be 3-0. and oh. Here, Here we, we go. go. Next game. Redskins at Panthers. Panthers minus seven. Okay, Matt. Uh, Skins fan. Skins fan. Give me some stats. Kirk Cousins. One and nine on the road as a starter. Is his one good? win was his rookie year. Not good. Is that good? No, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go ahead and say mm, not good. Do you good. like that? Uh, Do I, you like that? I, it's a great question. Yeah. I don't yet like that. Okay. He, uh, yeah, and Washington hasn't won back-to-back games since October 2014. Oh my god. That's a long time That's ago. That's your team. That's my team. Ooh. Yep. It's a real okay. thing. Okay, uh, uh, Dave, what do you got? But they are they are coming off a huge win last week. In case you guys didn't notice, they put up 47 oh. points. On New Orleans with Katie, led to the firing of Saints defensive coordinator Rob Ryan. How are you feeling? Awful. Awful. This news broke the day of the comedy show. And Mm -hmm. I was so busy that day. And I, I, oh my God, it was like, it was just a a dark cloud Mm -hmm. over my whole day. Um, He had to, it had to happen. But I love him. And I uh, hope he's doing okay, Rob, if you're listening. Of course you are. Uh, I, I, it's, that was bad. Yeah. It was bad, and it, he should feel bad. But, like, also, he needs to just take some time for himself. Mm-hmm. Drink a few beers. Drink a lot of beers. Mm-hmm. Hang out, call me. Uh, and, <laughs> and we'll... Uh, so sad. Yeah. Also, like, now we probably could get him on the show, but, like, what are we going to talk about? I don't know. Just Where to you go, just... you and him for dinner, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. If Rob Ryan becomes, like, not relevant, then, my, I need a new crush. Like, I need a new guy. Mm. That would suck. Like, you don't want to be that person who's, yeah. like, still obsessed with someone who doesn't even matter anymore. Like, I'll, I'll still be privately obsessed right. with him, but we've got to come up with, like, a new... So now that's like a whole other thing. He's been unemployed for three days and Katie's already rebounded. (laughs) She's out. Yeah, I can't be with a guy who doesn't, you know, bring home the bacon (laughs) and money. (laughs) He'll still be bringing home plenty of bacon. The bacon never makes it never makes it home from the grocery store. That's right. He just eats eats it it raw in the car. (laughs) Oh my god. Uh, okay, should oh, we man. make a pick? Let's make a pick on the game. Yeah, this <laughs> Redskins <laughs> Panthers Back to game. Redskins Panthers. Uh, <laughs> Matt. Uh, yeah, Matt, this is interesting. You said something last night that I completely... Yeah, I have a, I have a weird theory about it. Go ahead. I think uh, the Panthers are looking ahead. They play on Thanksgiving. Uh, I think uh, this has trap game potential. They're not going to go undefeated. This could be the one. I'm taking the skins to cover. Can you give me a little Fetty Wap? How would Fetty Wap? What kind of game I would don't Fetty know Wap? What that, what that means? What kind of game would Fetty Wap say this was? I was born in 1988. A trap. It's a trap game. Oh. This is, guys, come on. Yeah. If we're gonna, if I'm gonna let you do Dwayne the Brock Johnson, well, you then you the need character. to be there when I ask you to do a I, trap I, game I, song, Dave. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll just ride forward here. He seems to have a lot of info on this, and I actually was uh, agreeing with him when we were talking about it. I, I see. Uh, this has a letdown for the Panthers and the skins coming off hot and keeping it going. Skins plus seven. Fade that forward. This feels so contentious today because you two keep picking the same thing. And I'm Oh, you're not... gonna pick the good team? Yeah. That's so weird. <laughs> I'm gonna pick the good stop disrespecting the goddamn Panthers. Yeah, that's a fair point. Holy shit. Um, very fair point. Also, which we didn't talk about and good because I don't want to, but the whole the controversy of this week was that Cam Newton danced for too many seconds. I don't, uh, I can't, I'm going to pick the Panthers, <laughs> minus seven. Fade that pick. And then I'm going to do that sneeze dance. Hachu. Hachu. Uh, okay, next game. Packers at Vikings. Vikings minus one. I am fired up about this. Matt, give me some stats. Oh, yeah. All right, so Packers, Vikings. Dave, your Vikings. Yeah. Uh, Rodgers is 11-4 and four against them. But I will say, 
that Aaron Rodgers is on pace for his worst season in terms of yards and scoring. Is he? Yeah. Full season. Yeah. Where he's healthy. All right. Isn't that insane? It is insane. Yeah, something's obviously wrong there. And Packers fans online were actually speculating that ever since Rodgers' girlfriend, Olivia Munn, oh boy. spoke about their sex life on TV, Rodgers hasn't been a good quarterback, and that's because God is punishing him. Katie, what do you think about that? I think oh my gosh. that this is the dumbest fucking thing <laughs> ever in the world. Um... Rodgers hasn't been a good quarterback for a number of reasons, mm -hmm. none of which are that he's having sex with <laughs> Olivia Munn, uh, who he's been having sex with for quite some time now. Um, also, she spoke about their sex life on Watch What Happens Live Downstairs. on Bravo. Yeah. Where did those audiences intersect? The crazy Packers fan and the guy who watches Watch What Happens Live on Bravo. Like, what? That's one point. Agreed. Another point. Other Seattle fans are saying that Russell Wilson's bad because he's not fucking Sierra. <laughs> what is the deal? Is it that fucking someone hot makes you better? Or that it... Not fucking them. I don't like what. Be consistent, crazy sports fans. Mm, either agreed. either not having sex and abstaining makes you frustrated and that's why you're bad, or having sex makes you distracted and that's why you're bad. Um, if not having sex made you great, then Tim Tebow would be Tom Brady. <laughs> like we're really oh, that's like so that's true. the test case, and we're just totally everyone's breezing by that. You're right. You're right. I don't think Tim Tebow's a virgin. Hot take. We'll talk about it later. Mm, well, um, okay. Uh, uh, but yeah, there, it, it's funny you said that, you know, that there could be many reasons why Rodgers isn't good. Um, and an ESPN.com article actually... To be clear, he's not not good. Or he's hasn't great. been playing well. He is well. still above average. Of yeah. <laughs> he is Top not not five good. five MVP candidate. Yeah. For sure. Go so ahead. So an ESPN.com article um, listed five potential reasons why he's struggling. One of them was possible off the field issues. And Olivia Munn got fired up about that. Uh, she tweeted at um, the person who wrote the article saying, playing it fast and loose with the journalism. Your professional skills are lacking. You must be having personal problems at home. This is Rob Demosky who she was uh, tweeting this at. Yeah. Um, I mean, she knows she played a journalist on the off. newsroom. She also, <laughs> she did. Yeah. Uh, she, she also went off on a, a, a rant uh, about other things. She took a sharp left turn, which made me think that maybe there's something else that she was just frustrated with trolls on the internet. And girl, I feel you. <laughs> um, but the, I, the reason Aaron Rodgers is struggling, like why are we not talking about what the fuck Eddie Lacy's deal is? Why are we not right. talking about like Jordy Nelson is out. Like, there's so many things that make actual right. sense. Yeah. New person calling the plays this year for them. Why is everybody talking about that? Oh, well, so it's because Rodgers is getting it in. <laughs> like, okay. It's absurd. They were Not, dating last year and he won the MVP. Of course, That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's they've been yeah. they've been doing sex. I'm actually more like a, a little bit of like a if you're not having sex with someone, you're probably pretty frustrated and that would be an off the field issue. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, let's make a just stop fucking blaming girlfriends and wives. Honestly, cuz you can see there's clearly no winning for the girlfriend and or wife cuz if they fuck them, it's their fault. If they don't fuck them, it's their fault. It's not their fault. Uh, be good at your jobs and don't blame your wives and girlfriend. Anyway, good. For uh, for who are you picking? Can I just ask one question? No. I want to ask one question. What? Who is having sex with the Packers defense? What sorcerer <laughs> woman is having sex with Dom Capers so they can give up thirty points to the Lions? Oh, uh, I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take Green Bay here. They uh, haven't lost four in a row since 2008. I think this is the week. Before I pick, um, I'm curious, is Stefan Diggs here this week? Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Hi, Producer Dave. Hi, Katie Nolan. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, Chris Kirk. <laughs> you seem really happy. Yes, yes, happy. yes, yes, yes. The NFL's hottest club is the Vikings, okay? This place has everything. Bridgewater, Fat Eddie Lacy, Corderail. <laughs> I don't think Fat Eddie Lacy's on the Vikings. Oh, whatever. He's just adorable. <laughs> Oh, man, are you excited to play the Packers this yes, week? Yes, 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 yes. Green Bay has everything. <laughs> Green Bay has Aaron Rodgers, 
Richard Rogers, <laughs> Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's no Mr. Rogers in Green no, Bay. No, I'm pretty sure he is. I've seen him at all the clubs. Okay, bye. Who's, whose podcast is this? Stephon Diggs. That was happening? nice of Stefan Diggs to come by. Oh, that was a nice booking, guys. Oh, my God. Dave, it's, what's uh, your pick? I'm going to take the uh, of Vi- Vikings all day. I'll take Vikings minus one. Mm-hmm. Ford, who did you pick? Packers. Fade that Ford. All right. Um, I am going to pick the Packers plus one. Fade that pick. Okay, my lock of the week this week uh, is, oh, God, it feels weird to say it out loud, but it's San Francisco. Because it's a, it, right now our line is locked. I know that the others will change, like the actual lines, but we use Yahoo lines from our Picks League, and they lock on what? Who's winning the Picks League? Thursday. You are. Producer oh, Matt is oh, winning the Picks gosh, League. Gosh, I forgot. Um, Thank you. I have more important things in my life to worry about, but Producer Ford takes the Picks League very seriously. Yeah, I do. And uh, I keep calling you Producer Ford instead of Matt. My lock of the week is San Francisco because 13 points, it's not going to happen. Seattle is bad. They don't, they don't, they're not bad, but they're not great. And I don't think they'll win by that much. I think they'll win, but I have faith in Blaine Gabbard on the road. I think they're going to get it done. <laughs> this feels like a lock, doesn't it? That's my lock of the week. Definitely fade that pick. Yes, San Francisco seems lovely this time of year. <laughs> so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm making that pick. Okay, time to give some love to our sponsor, Adidas. Ready to ditch the step counters and start getting more from your workouts? Who isn't? But who has the time and money for personal trainers and fancy equipment? Adidas has the gear you need to step it up and find your more. Track the fitness stats that truly matter. I'm not talking about just steps. I mean calories, heart rate, pace, and plenty more. Adidas even gives you custom training plans to load onto your device. They'll push you to new limits that step counters never could. Pair that with a mobile app that syncs with all your workout data, and it's a no-brainer. This is the first step to a new, fitter you. This Adidas gear is designed to get you more from your workouts from day one. If you're ready to step it up and find your more, visit adidas.com and search Fit Smart or Smart Run today. Love Nailing it. those. Love mm-hmm. it. That's Nailing great. those. That's awesome. Uh, cool. So earlier this week, we had comedian Dan Soder come in to do a segment for our television program, Garbage Time. And before we did that, we were chatting for a little bit. We ended up talking for like 15 minutes and getting into a very heated conversation. We talked about Blaine Gabbert, his love of pro wrestling, and then we f- we duked it out over what the best sauce at McDonald's is. <laughs> so, so rather funny. than like get rid of that conversation, we decided we would use it for the podcast this week. So it's a little different, but... Dan Soder is hilarious, and I think you guys are going to like this, so take a listen. Dan Soder. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Bummed out because we were just talking about the Niners off camera. Yeah. We're going to keep doing it on camera. Oh, man. This is mean. You grew up in Denver, but you are a 49ers fan. Is that because they're so good? Oh. Are you calling me a front runner? Yeah. You seem like a real pink hat. I was born in Hartford, and uh, instead of siding with the... Patriots. My dad is from the Bay Area, so it was just like common knowledge in the house. Good choice. He was like, Niners, Giants. So for the first 21 years of my life, pretty sweet. Past 10, ups and downs. Yeah. Downs mostly. Yeah. Three seasons of some ups. Yeah. How do you feel about um, Blaine Gabbert? I don't know. You're a Patriots fan. You, I mean, you have a hunk for a quarterback. <laughs> that's what we have now. A hunk that doesn't win, but we have a hunk. He's won. He's won it all this season over the Falcons. Which was good. Oh, God. I'm trying to find just I some know, way to um, make this okay. You're, their uniforms are a nice color. Listen, Blaine Gabbert could be okay, but the thing I like about him is he actually has football intelligence. He knows mm. how to check down and throw the ball away as opposed to Colin Kaepernick and his dog right out of a kennel energy that he has in the backfield. (laughs) Where he's just like, ah, ah, ah. Uh, You're like, Colin, no, Colin, drop it. Focus. Drop it. Drop it. But he does it. He throws a bullet right into the chest of whatever middle linebacker is playing a soft cover too. Because that's the life we live, quest for six. (laughs) How do you, what do you think, Colin Kaepernick's future looks like from here. Oh, man, he's going to be the best Toronto Argonaut. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only team Go in that league the... that I know. Yeah. Do you know I, any other team? I know the Montreal Alouettes. Oh, yeah, that's and right. And I know the um, Eskimos. Is that a political <laughs> correct? Yeah. 
That's what yes. Warren Moon played for. The Eskimos? Yeah. Edmonton Eskimos? Man, I could be wrong. Listen, Kaepernick's going to nail the rouge every time. <laughs> I don't like him and his, uh, yeah. He was trying to be sexy. That's how I knew we were in trouble. Blaine Gabbert, just naturally sexy. <laughs> uh, Colin Kaepernick, remember that? The body issue, him posing, him yeah. being like, yeah. I unfollowed him while we were winning. That's how I knew we were in trouble. What? Hashtag seven pounds. Don't know what that means. What does that mean? Don't know. How I've, much the human head weighs. I've read The Merchant of Venice from uh, Shakespeare and usually pound of flesh, but I didn't know. Sorry, it gets weird. What? Listen, we were doing so well and then it was like, what, you lost us with the books reference. <laughs> because it's hard. I have to put my mind in other places I when I think about the Niners. You're reading a lot of books lately. I have to. <laughs> I Arts can't read crafts. articles about Bowman saying he might come back and then him being like, I'll never come back. Uh, it's um, We're the opposite of the Patriots right now. Yes. It's just like... Um, Good, bad. Yeah. Here's how I look at being a 49er fan. Mm. And yes, I'm from Denver, which made it even harder. Because do you know what it's like being a little boy and telling a bunch of other little boys that Joe Montana is way better than John Elway? <laughs> which he is. Uh, a lot of little fists get thrown at your face when you say that growing up in really? Denver. Yeah, it was like, that's what makes me not like the Broncos. Okay. They're sports fan. Like, their fans are very passionate. All right, but that's a whole. Anyways, growing up a 49ers fan was like having a successful father mm. that, like, you were just like, went on vacation to like Italy every summer, and you're like, this is the best. And then around your 18th birthday, he got addicted to heroin. Uh. <laughs> And then just like spent all of your family's money and then like got clean and his buddy gave him a job and you're like, we're back on top for three years. And then he's booting in a truck stop bathroom somewhere right now. And so we're back to zero. But I love, I love my fake father and I believe in him. Let's, well, let's move on to the NBA. Who's your NBA team? The only Denver team I support, the Denver Nuggets. Okay. If you can't tell, I'm a glutton for punishment. Yeah, I'm a glutton for nuggets. I Are love you? Nuggets. I love all nuggets. Chicken nuggets. So good. Weed nuggets. Yep. <laughs> Denver Nuggets. Yeah. I. Uh, here's the thing. I made so the Bay Area sports obviously was what I was bred to like mm -hmm. with the San Francisco 49ers, San Francisco Giants, mm -hmm. and I, the Warriors were pushed on me heavily. But we moved to Denver when I was about six, and I loved Dikembe Mutombo. Mm. Mount Mutombo mm -hmm. was like the best. And then that all culminate, culminated in that 94 season, beating the Sonics, eight seed beating a one seed, and mm. I was like, Nuggets That's fever. Sick. Yeah. Didn't know I was gonna be in for a lifetime of pure punishment with that. <laughs> And then the mel we got mellow, and everything got good. Mm -hmm. Then we got the 09 uh, Western Conference Finals, mm -hmm. and Trevor Ariza ripped our heart out. And then um, Carmelo's wife decided that she can't have a career in Denver and <laughs> put his balls in her purse and made him uh, get traded to the New York Knicks. So now I have a rule that I won't be a Knicks fan until Carmelo's gone. But then you'll just be a Knicks fan. Yeah, why not? I live in New York. Here's the thing. Western Conference team, always a Nuggets fan. Very hard to catch a lot of Nuggets games on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. I already pay for the NFL package. I don't want to pay mm -hmm. for the NBA package. I need an East Coast team. <laughs> I don't want the Nets. No. That's garbage. You just keep saying Nuggets. I'm so hungry. I can't stop. Do you want to order? Can we yeah. get Nuggets? Yes. O'Toole, can you go get us some Nuggets? Thank I could you. eat like a lot of nuggets. Um, it's just like I could barbecue or eat. honey mustard. Well, where are we going? Because if we're going to McDonald's and it's sweet and sour, go fuck yourself. You wouldn't. It's always sweet and sour. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> sweet and sour is the best. Listen, I don't know what happened to you in your past, but I'm sorry. <laughs> You go one dunk barbecue, one dunk honey You're mustard. You're disgusting. <laughs> or variety is the spice of life. Or those nuggets are so good you don't need sauce. You certainly don't need two fucking sauces. No sauce on chicken McNuggets from McDonald's? From McDonald's? Processed like food. It's like a grease it's not explosion chicken. in your mouth. Yeah, it's grease. Yeah. So, you so just why like do I need to make balls. it wetter? 
because <laughs> barbecue sauce gives it flavor. Yeah, sure. Oh, I just want hot grease in my mouth. No, I use sweet and sour sauce because I'm not a it's fucking terrorist. Weird. No other place has sweet and sour sauce because only McDonald's Because no one has nails, sweet and sour sauce only in Only McDonald's nails. You're an insane person. It's the most popular sauce at McDonald's. I will, Google it. Oh, Are my you God. Yeah, me? I'm going to Google it. Are you out of your mind? Sweet and This sour is like sauce? not an unpopular opinion. No, this it's, is this is craziness. Fast. This is this a is fact. craziness. I'm oh, yeah, and missionary is the best sexual position. It Why is. Would, what? Who are you? That is a borderline crime. Are you fucking Googling it? No, but I am. I'm so mad. I can't even it's type. It's the best sauce. I'd pull this group. I don't want to embarrass you. Oh, my God. Really? Well, it's cool to know that you have a bunch of soulless heathens working for you. Whoever thinks sweet and sa- sweet. And, oh, my God. I'm so mad. Four, four McDonald's french fries and dipped sour in sweet sauce. and sour. Sweet and sour when sauce. When you say sour sauce, you make it sound gross. Yeah, because it's in the name. <laughs> so, it's oh, do you want me to? So good. Sweet sauce. Have you ever had it? Do you want to give it like a Have fake name, like it? little kids' Have names? Have you ever had it? That's my dunking sauce. I found, I found it. You've never had it. I've had, I've had it. You've never had sweet and sour life. sauce. I've lived life. It doesn't sound like you have. I've had sweet and sour Barbecue, sauce. Barbecue, honey, mustard. That's they, those don't even go together. Yeah, you're right. They don't because I am iconic <laughs> and all my tastes are brand new and cutting edge. I'm sorry that you aren't Did you evolving. Go, do you know how to type? Yeah. I, well, no, I'm pretty angry right now and popular is not coming out the way it's supposed to. Sweet and sour sauce, most popular. The best sweet no, and sour. No, you got it at McDonald's. McDonald's. You got it right because that's it, that's not what it looks like. That says fruity sweet sauce, which yeah, is which not, is probably no, that's not what I'm about. I'm yeah. talking about that congealed, like brownish, kind of clear, I not almost, really actually clear. I almost respect your love of science, yeah, but at the same time, you're just dead wrong. So it's like translucent is a good word for it. Copycat recipe. Yeah, because you want to copy it because it's so fucking good. What kind of garbage get, person wants to copy McDonald's you can get sweet and barbecue sour. sauce anywhere? Honey mustard. Anywhere, yeah. sweet and sour sauce. You gotta go to Mickey D's, and it's so fucking good. You're it's fucking not good. out of your mind. I've lost all respect for you. I mean, I don't even know if I have any to begin with now, because knowing that you, your backstory is that you like sweet and sour sauce. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you these last two fucking questions. What are the two questions? You're a I'm big, sorry for yelling. That's okay, me too. You just got it. That sauce you is really me. good. It's a really good sauce. I feel right. like you're just being contrarian. I don't I feel, appreciate oh, it. Oh, okay. Oh, I bring up Shakespeare and I get shit on. <laughs> you're throwing around contrarian? <laughs> You make these guys do a live show last night. You drag them in. You're throwing your $10 words around. Your horse shit addiction to sweet and sour sauce. So good. Yeah, it's, it's real so good. good. You're a big pro wrestling fan. Huge pro wrestling what, fan. What got you hooked on wrestling as a kid? I don't know. Have you ever watched a man slam a giant in front of 90,000 people? <laughs> <laughs> That'll get you addicted pretty quick. <laughs> The seventh wonder, the eighth wonder of the world, yeah. getting body slammed at the yeah. Pontiac Silverdome. Yeah. Did it for you? Yeah. Uh, Hulkamania. What, makes, what keeps you a fan now? Uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know what actually it is now that I'm I'm grown up watching wrestling is, uh, they take falls that I'm like oh like I couldn't do physically. Yeah. So now it's just like a respect of like oh man you guys are gonna be sore tomorrow, <laughs> but then they just do another show and I just. I, I don't know. It's like uh, soap opera meets stuntman yeah, stuff. Yeah, everybody always uses a soap opera comparison. All right, well, you watch. You have to watch some garbage TV. Um, yeah, well, I watch really bad television. What's the worst thing you watch? Oh God, that's tough. Admit it. Probably Real Housewives of New York. That's wrestling for women. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I told you instead of plastic faces and shoddy tit jobs. Oh, WWE has those. Yeah, but also kick-ass spandex and dudes powerbombing each other through tables. So you've never seen an episode of Real Housewives? Of New York? Are you about to make me a Real Housewives fan? I think you just became one. If they do ladder matches, I'm in. Only at the reunion. Oh, yeah. could you imagine that? Yeah. If they oh, put a, it gets even, like they, the fights on the reunion specials are crazier than anything in the WWE. What if they put like a, like a glass of Chardonnay on top of a ladder and then they made all the women fight? Someone stop the damn reunion! Jim Ross It would be it? Pinot Grigio, oh, but it's fine. We'll okay. get you, we'll get, Ooh. I'll up your knowledge. Um, you hate wrestling. I don't hate it. I want to like it, but I can't, like the acting's real bad. Yeah, so all reality TV, like that kind of acting's bad. Yeah, well, so they're not like act, 
it's not real, but they're not like acting. The delivery of lines in WWE is it's great. so bad. Embrace it. No, I can't. Oh, really? But you can embrace sweet and sour sauce from McDonald's? <laughs> yeah. But you can't embrace a guy that was dead and now is not dead? <laughs> doesn't make any sense to me. None of it makes sense. You it's great. Be, you can't be dead and not dead. Yeah, you can. If, if you can't be Undertaker. sweet and sour. <laughs> if you're a dipping sauce at McDonald's, you can. Uh, holy shit, you have a Comedy Central special coming up. An hour? Yeah. They gave you an hour? I know. What are you going to talk about? I don't know. Oh my God. I don't know. How do you prepare for something like uh, that? Straight Bill Romanowski style. Hyperbaric chamber. <laughs> lots of HGH. Just punching walls. Just yeah. repeatedly punching walls. Uh, I've been on the road and then kind of just been getting ready for this for like six months. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of fun. I do like a shitty version of 24-7, like the Leave Shriver voice in my voice where I'm like, Dan Soder's camp is filled with weed and coffee. <laughs> and it's just me doing that Mayweather thing, but it's just like a shitty Holiday Inn. And I'm not the money team, I'm like the pity team. <laughs> TPT. TPT. Ah, uh, feel bad for me. Ah, uh, empathy. Empathy, hard work, dedication. That's what I do. And I do one sit up and I'm like, ah, fuck this shit. And I lay back down. So we're going to make this, right? Yeah. We have to make oh, this 24-7. 24-7 dance over. Oh, my God. One I punch. Want to do. I'm good. Uh, I'm, I'm good. good. It's just my un me borrowing money off my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, uh, can I get another 50? I don't get that check till we finish shooting. Are you nervous? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. should be. Yeah. It's a long time. You know how crazy it'd be if I wasn't nervous? Yeah. Like how much of a sociopath I'd be? Yeah. If I'd be like, I deserve this. <laughs> yeah, you'd be I'm like, gonna, a... get out of my way. I'm going to shine. No, I'm going to hopefully do well and people are going to laugh. They're going to love it. Uh, Dan Soder, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I like you a lot. I don't respect you. Cool. <laughs> to be quite honest, don't really know who you are. That's <laughs> Thanks again to Dan Soder. Uh, to be clear, Dave, what is the best sauce at McDonald's? A hundred percent sweet and sour sauce, no you're, doubt about it. You're just saying that because you want us no, to. No, I actually, again. I actually, I actually feel the same way. Matthew, uh, sweet and sour sauce, boss. That's what it is. Goddamn right. Uh, so Am thank, you, thank you to Dan Soder, who is great but wrong. Um, and he's taping his Comedy Central special in Philadelphia on December 3rd. For tickets and info, you can go to dansoder.com. And that's going to be great. Yeah. He's about to blow up. For sure. Yeah. He's hilarious yeah. and so nice and wonderful. Okay, it's time for junk mail. You've got junk mail. Cool. Today's junk mail question comes from uh, Mason Daly. He asks, appropriately, what's your go-to karaoke song? I say appropriately, appropriately because after the comedy show, uh, we went out and did a, a little karaoke. Yeah, I wasn't done being on stage, apparently, with a microphone, so we went out and did karaoke uh, for whatever reason. My usual go-to karaoke song is Criminal by Fiona Apple. As you can tell, I'm a little horse this week. I feel like every time I do that, someone's going to throw that stupid horse head from the pig stone at me. Um, yeah, I wasn't feeling like I was going to get up there and crush it, so I did, um, I did Salt and Peppa. Ooh, strong. Shoop. Shoop. Yeah, I well, so it was strong, but so were my drinks. And so, like, in the second verse, I just stopped. <laughs> um, and I did it with my old roommate, Kirsa, uh, who's a, friend, a good friend of mine, and she was also very drunk, and she offered no help. Mm. Uh, so that was, it was pretty bad. Uh, I was actually offered notes on it afterwards <laughs> from my producers oh, wow. saying that, like, That's it was what bad. We do. Mm. So we thanks, notes. guys. No then problem. later I sang um, uh, Ironic. <laughs> by Alanis Morissette, because at that point, almost everyone had left, <laughs> and I wanted to sing it. Isn't that ironic? Don't you think? For sure. So that was fun. Awesome. So that doesn't answer his question. What's your go-to? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I know your go-to. So producer Dave, at one point, I was like, I'm going to put in songs for everybody, because I wanted everybody to go up and sing, because that would make me happy. Mm -hmm. I asked Dave, and he's like, no, nah, I'm just gonna, he's just, uh, he's just all quiet in the corner, not really talking too much. All of a sudden, we're all hanging out. I look up on stage, who but producer Dave standing there with the microphone in his hand. I'm like, what's about to go down? The music drops 
It's bye bye bye, <laughs> and he wants to do it alone, <laughs> and he wants to do the dancing, and he needs the room. So please back up and just straight faced, <laughs> not laughing, nails bye bye bye. Thank you. I appreciate of course that. It did. That was top five weirdest slash best things that have, that you've ever done. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, I feel really passionately about... Um, I'm not entirely sure it's a compliment, what I just said. I'm going to take it as okay. a compliment because it feels like one. And sure? um, yeah, I in sync Bye 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 is my jam. And I do know all the dance moves. And whenever I have an opportunity to show that off, I do. And luckily, Monday night I was able to. So thank you to all my fans. I really appreciate it. Uh, okay, cool. That's, that's junk mail. That was junk mail. Uh, okay, guys, that's it. Um... We will be back next Thursday, also known as Thanksgiving. Uh, we're going to do a special fun podcast, so that'll be great. And then we'll be, like, really back the next week. But be sure to subscribe on iTunes and rate it and leave a comment or listen on SoundCloud or Stitcher, however you like to listen to your podcasts. Thanks again to Dan Soder and to Adidas. Yeah, thank you, Adidas. Uh, and to all of you guys for listening and to my producers, producer Matt. Thank you so much for having me. Producer Dave. Thank you. Producer Kirk. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's it. Bye. Love you, Mina. Yeah.